Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be dipping into this basket of goodies here. I have recently uploaded a few hauls, my Sephora VIB sale haul, my March haul. I have some new products to share with you, specifically the KVD Vegan Beauty Good Apple Foundation and the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes. These were highly requested videos. Y'all said in the comments down below that you wanted a full review on these two. So I just thought, you know what? I have tons of new makeup that I need to try. Let's just get ready together. Let's try all of the things. And as we're trying them out, I will let you know my thoughts. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I am a teacher who loves all things makeup and beauty. I love talking, I love makeup, I love talking about makeup. So if that's something you're into, I do typically post three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, but I would like to invite you to subscribe because if you subscribe, I'll just pop up in your feed and then you'll be notified when I post a new video. But why don't we go ahead and let's start playing with some new makeup. tad bit awkward doing like get ready with me or tutorial style videos because I haven't actually filmed my intro yet so I don't know what I told you but <laughs> the reason why I wanted to film this video is because there are two specific makeup products that a lot of you said you wanted to see me use and one of them was this foundation here this is the KVD vegan beauty good apple skin perfecting foundation balm now I got the shade light 021 this has a 12 month shelf life it's vegan it's supposed to be fully recyclable material like literally when it's gone you can you can just recycle all of this so I think that's really cool I've never tried a foundation balm before I've never even heard of a foundation balm before. I don't know if there are any other products like this one, but in watching reviews, I heard a lot of dry skinned gals like myself mention that they liked this foundation balm. So I already primed my skin because not everything that I'm gonna use is new, but I just wanted to showcase some new items. I went in first with my Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops, put that all over the face, and then I took my Tatcha Silk Canvas and focused that just like where I have larger pores and on the little wrinkles on my forehead. Now, I don't know if there's a right way and a wrong way to use this foundation, but as you can see, I just, I just take my finger, I just literally take my finger and kind of draw stripes on my face. I thought that might be a little bit better than going in with my sponge and constantly dipping in. It's not the most hygienic way <laughs> to get your foundation on your face, that's for sure but that's normally how I do it. And then I always apply my foundation with a beauty sponge. So today I'm using the BK Beauty Beauty Sponge and I also like to go in with a little Fix Plus. I don't know if it necessarily does anything, but in my head, I feel like it does. Now this foundation is supposed to be pretty full coverage, but also, like I mentioned, I've heard a lot of dry skinned gals say that they really enjoy this while some of the oily skinned people who have done reviews are saying that it's not so much a favorite of theirs. Having dry skin I tend to go for something that has like a luminous or dewy claim and my personal preference for foundation is more of a light to medium coverage. So initially when I heard about this foundation and how it was full coverage, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's gonna be for me. But like I said, I'm always on the hunt for a foundation that's not gonna make me look dry and patchy and caked up. And I have worn this a few times. So this is a review. It's not a first impression. I've been wearing this throughout the week. I got this foundation on Tuesday and today, the day that I'm filming, is a Saturday. If you if you don't know, I pre-film all of my videos because I am a teacher, so I film on the weekend and then I upload during the week. But I have been wearing this foundation for a few days now 
and I have some thoughts on it. So I'm going to finish applying it and then I'll talk more about my thoughts because uh, if you're new here, I can be very chatty and we'll be on the same step for a really long time if I try to talk and do my makeup. Okay, so this is just one layer of the foundation. Now granted, I did go in with a very light layer. You saw I just used my finger, I applied it directly on, and then a beauty sponge to blend it all out. Now typically, if you go in with a foundation brush instead of a beauty sponge, you'll get a little bit more full coverage, but with one application, after hearing that this foundation was so full coverage, I was a little bit surprised because I don't feel like one application of this foundation is very full coverage. You can see I do have a little blemish right here that I've picked at that you can see I have a little scar from an old blemish right there. You can see my freckle. Like it doesn't completely cover everything up, which I don't mind because like I said, I'm more of a light to medium coverage lover, but I'm gonna go ahead, apply a second coat of the foundation doing the same thing, just taking my finger and applying it that way. And then I'll show you once I blend it out. There you go, so you can see. Once I blend it out, I'll show you the second layer. Okay, so this is my face with two coats of the foundation. As you can see, it does give me a little bit more coverage, but I still don't necessarily feel like it's completely full coverage. Now I am looking in a mirror that's a little bit further away. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the mirror in this Artist Couture Supreme Nudes. I haven't even taken the plastic off yet. And I'm gonna see here, looking up close, I still don't feel like it's full coverage. I don't really notice any cakiness, but I do wanna say it does look a tad bit dry around my nostril area, which if you have dry skin, that may be an area of a problematic area for you where you do have a little bit of dryness there. I've never really noticed that before, but I do see a little bit of dryness here. But I don't have any dry patches on my face. I don't notice this clinging to any dry patches, but I still don't necessarily feel like this is full coverage. Now, perhaps if I scooped some of the foundation out and maybe warmed it up in my hands and applied it with a, a brush, perhaps I could get more foundation that way or a more full coverage. But like I said, I do see these couple little specks. I do see my freckle. So overall, I like the coverage. I just don't necessarily I don't necessarily feel like it's full coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my eyebrows off camera. As you can see, they're very non-existent. And so because I basically have to create these bad boys from scratch, I like putting my foundation on first. So I'm gonna go ahead, apply a brow, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with some eyebrows. Now we can go into concealer. One of these is new, the other one is not. I did pick up this Rare Beauty concealer in the shade 200C back in like January or February. And while this was my shade match, according to the Sephora Shade Finder, I do find that it pulls pretty orange on me and it's a little bit deeper than I like for a concealer. So I do kind of focus it on the inner part of my eyes and then I like to go in with my Pat McGrath concealer in the shade L5. And I will just put this right next to that Rare Beauty. And I feel like the orange tint of the Rare Beauty helps to cancel out any darkness. And then my Pat McGrath will brighten my under eyes. Then a tip I learned from my friend Heather Austin is she lets hers sit for a little bit before blending it in. So I wanna give you my final thoughts on this KVD foundation. First of all, I don't necessarily feel like this is full coverage. To me personally, at least the way that I'm applying it, I get more of a medium coverage, which I enjoy. I don't get any dewiness. I don't get any luminosity. I don't necessarily know if this would be considered a matte foundation because I don't have any other matte foundations in my collection having dry skin. I like more luminosity. I like more dewiness, which is why I like to prime with my niacinamide dew drops. Also, if you have the Auric Glow Lust, you could go in with that first if you want more luminosity. I don't struggle with dry patches, even though I have dry skin, but I do notice I get a little bit of like separation where it just, 
it doesn't look as flawless by my nose where I do have some dryness, some extra dryness. But I don't have any issues with this slipping throughout the day. This isn't a foundation that I need to set with powder, although I don't set any of my foundations with powder. And I do find that longevity-wise, this foundation lasts a while. So I typically put my makeup on at like 5.30 in the morning, and I typically always start with my face or my complexion before going in with my eyes, unless I know that the eyeshadow I'm gonna use has fallout. So I apply this foundation around 5.30 in the morning. Then what I'll do is I'll go to work, I come home, I play with my daughter, I feed my daughter, I put my daughter to sleep, and around 8, 8.30 is when I'm finally getting to wash my foundation off. And I can say that Thursday night when I wore this, I didn't get home until 9.30 because I was over at a girlfriend's house, so I applied it at 5.30 in the morning, got home at 9.30, and I took a good look in the mirror. I should have taken a picture, but I didn't. And for the most part, for having worn my foundation for such a long time, it was still intact. You could see my bronzer and my blush. You didn't really see any areas where my foundation wiped off completely. Now, did it look worn and lived in? It did. It did, but it didn't look bad, it hadn't separated, it hadn't wiped off my face, and overall, for having makeup on for that amount of time, it did look pretty good. So I do think that overall, this is a fairly good foundation. It gives pretty good coverage. It feels pretty comfortable on the skin. Is this a foundation that I'm gonna find myself reaching for time and time again? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be a fast favorite. Will I get some use out of it? Will I wear it? Yes, I will, but I'll probably go in with something luminous on my skin first and then apply it. I do know that it will hold up well, so I don't mind wearing it for a full day. I just, I know that this got hyped up on TikTok. I'm not on the TikTok. I mean, like, I have TikTok, so I'm, I know what it is, but I've never posted a video or anything. I just, I just... I just don't know if it lives up to the hype. So like I said, pretty good foundation. I'll get use out of it, but I don't think it's gonna be a favorite. Okay, so I did blend in my concealer. I set it with my Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, and I did actually go in with bronzer already. I reached into my Life's a Draft eyeshadow palette. This is from Ofra Cosmetics in collaboration with Samantha March, the bronzer right there in Key. And while this is a new palette and new to me, I do have a whole dedicated review using that palette and using that bronzer. So I'm gonna go in with the highlight in a minute because I love Ofra highlighters, but the blush, that I wanted to showcase today. I mentioned it in in my recent low by failure haul, but it is by Becca Cosmetics. By now, we have all heard that sadly, Becca Cosmetics is closing their doors in September of this year, and I had never gotten my hands on any of their blushes. People raved about these in like the OG YouTube days, and I always thought that I would pick up a blush, but it's one of those things where so much new makeup is coming out all of the time that sometimes I get a little bit bombarded, and then there can be makeup items that just, you know, get pushed to the back burner, which happened to Flower Child. Did I say Songbird? Flower Child. What did I say? Flower Child is the shade that I got. So it's a very popular shade. I am going to use a Sigma F40 angled brush to apply it, but I have been meaning to try this blush out. My friend Heather Austin was on me like, girl, use this blush. It does have a bit of a like pink gold shift to it. So let's see. I do like to bring my blush right above my contour and blend it that way. I just have heard people talk about these blushes for years. It is very pigmented, let me tell you. I am light-handed anyway that is super pretty. But look how pigmented. You can see it is mostly pink, but you get a little bit of that gold shift. Heather, how do you feel this compares to the NARS blush, you know, that everybody likes to wear? Heather has said that she's gone through many of those NARS blushes, 
And I'm just wondering, if you've tried Flower Child, could you leave a comment to let the people know how this shade compares to the NARS shade? The reason why, in case anybody's curious, ooh, look how pigmented. I was just tapping. If anybody's curious why sometimes I'm careful about the things that I say on YouTube, not only am I a teacher, I don't know if I have any students watching me. I don't broadcast this information to them. Did I just dig my nail into that? No, but I, actually I might have. I think I just dug my nail in here. Um, my niece. My niece watches me. She's in second grade. So that's why I am a little bit careful <laughs> about how I phrase things. But this blush is very pretty. Definitely has a sheen to it. I am still gonna go in with highlighter because I love a blinding highlight, which is why I love the Ofra formula. But first time using this blush, I do think it's beautiful. I have a ton of peachy neutral shades, and this is like a beautiful pink shade, but the gold shift in it is definitely very noticeable. This is really pretty. Now I did get this from the Becca Cosmetics website and on the website if you signed up for their newsletter and it was your first time doing so, you could get 20% off. So I picked this up from the Becca website because I did see that Flower Child was out of stock at one point in time. Was it Flower Child or was it Songbird? One of them was out of stock on the Sephora website and because Becca's going out of stock, I don't know how often they're going to be restocking it. And I just wanted to have a blush on hand. Now for a highlighter, I am gonna go in with the Dream Chaser highlight right here. Ofra Samantha March collab. I love Ofra highlighters. I think they are so blinding and beautiful and that's what I'm into. But they also look very natural and they sit very beautifully on the skin. And like I said, I do have a whole review using this. So beautiful. But I want to tell you guys something crazy that happened with my daughter. I don't share a lot of personal stuff on YouTube. Not really a reason why, but I just feel like we're here talking about makeup, so sometimes I feel like it's awkward if I just randomly throw something personal in. But for those of you that don't know, my daughter is probably two by the time this video goes up. I'm filming right before her birthday. Her birthday is April 22nd. And she's about to be two years old, so she's walking, talking, very busy, happy, happy girl, right? So, the night before Easter, we went on an Easter egg hunt. I am going to go in with the Vive Eye Wand, and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to use that to prime in the shade Vanilla. We went on an Easter egg hunt the night before Easter in our neighborhood. Our homeowners association put it on. It went well. It was in the little playground area in our neighborhood. There were like a couple other kids her age. They went by age group. She found a bunch of eggs. Normal night. We came home together as a family. She went to bed just fine. Everything was normal. And she woke up on Easter Sunday and wouldn't walk. She would not put any pressure on her right leg. And we did not know what was going on. We didn't know if she injured it. We didn't know what happened. It took us a while to figure out that she wouldn't even walk on it because I changed her diaper and put her down to go find her Easter basket and she just wanted me to pick her back up. We thought, okay, maybe she's being a little bit whiny. So I carried her into the other room and I'm like, look, there's your Easter basket. And I put her down to get her to go like run over and get it. And she was like, will you get it for me, mom? Will you get it for me? I'm going to start using the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes palette while I'm telling you this story. And then I'll give you my thoughts on the palette after. So I'm going to go in with this shade right here and expose to set. So anyway, we got the Easter basket for her. And that's when my husband and I realized like she's not walking at all. So we literally tried to figure out what was wrong. There was no redness, nothing was swollen. She was not tender to the touch. We were touching her leg all over. Like I said, there were no visible signs of anything. She looked totally normal. It was the weirdest thing. So of course, Easter Sunday, 
what shade do I want to go in with next? I think I'm going to go in with the, this shade right here in Stripped as my uh, crease shade. So we ended up putting a call in to her pediatrician because luckily her pediatrician's office, someone is on call 24 seven. So we put a call in and you basically, if you're not familiar, you call this after hours number and you get like some, like a receptionist person and they take your message and your information and then they give it to the doctor on call and someone calls you back. So first a nurse called us back and we were like, you know, she's not walking when she's sitting down, when she's at rest, when she's watching TV, totally normal. She crawled on it when she was crawling on the couch. She kneeled on her leg when she was sitting at the table. We thought maybe it was her knee because she just wouldn't put any pressure down and she wouldn't walk. She didn't act like she was in pain when we were touching it. It was the weirdest thing. So this nurse calls us back and says, you know what, just to be safe, like you guys should probably take her into an urgent care. They told us what urgent care to go to. They were like, you can sign up online and go. Well, they called us during her nap. So we made an appointment to go to the urgent care and literally like 10 minutes later, an actual doctor calls us back, a doctor that we've seen before. It's not like her primary doctor that she sees for well visits, but a doctor from her office called us back. And he said, I think she might have something called transient synovitis. And we were like, what? What did you say? Transient synovitis, also known as toxic synovitis and he had asked us a few questions beforehand he asked what happened the night before we said she didn't fall down there were no signs of injury no redness it doesn't look like something bit her like we don't know what's going on so he said transient synovitis typically comes after uh following like a, a cold or some sort of sickness virus that your kid has stomach bug and a few weeks prior like maybe two weekends prior, Brielle had like a runny nose and a little bit of a cough, but that was it. Not even anything where we thought she was sick. And so he said, I'm looking for a specific brush. Here it is. I'm looking for this BK Beauty brush and I'm going to go in with this cool toned deep shade in silhouette right here. So he said that one of his kids, he actually has four kids, he said one of his kids had this one time. And you essentially wake up and out of nowhere your kid's not walking and you don't know why because there was no fall, no sign of injury, didn't look like anything bit her. And so what this, this virus does is it affects the hip joint. We thought it was Brielle's knee but it was her hip and it feels like arthritis for them. They don't really know why it happens. Like I said, it typically comes after your kid has had a cold. It's most common in kids between the ages of three to eight. And like I said, I mean, Brielle was like two weeks away from being two. And he said that it's not really an uncommon thing to happen. Although I had never heard of anybody else talking about their kid having this transient synovitis. So basically it's like arthritis of the hip joint. There's nothing you can do. And just as quickly as it comes, it goes away on its own. You just treat it with Motrin. So he told us, I don't think you need to go into the urgent care. I think you can come in tomorrow morning. We'll take a look at her. All the urgent care is gonna do is take x-rays and tell you if something's wrong, but we can do that in the office. So we opted to follow his advice. I want a brush that's a little bit more dense, so I'm gonna go in with this Morphe one, same color. We opted to do that. We gave her some Motrin that day and we canceled the urgent care because she didn't seem like she was in pain when she was at rest. She just didn't want to walk. So after giving her some Motrin and some time going by, she ended up walking on it. She walked with a limp, but she was walking on it and putting pressure on it. So the next day we went to the doctor, we saw a different doctor, a sports medicine doctor. They didn't think that x-rays or anything like that were necessary. They said, based on how she did with Motrin the day before, they really think it's this transient synovitis. It could be gone in anywhere from like two to 10 days. So they said, keep an eye on us, keep an eye on it, call us if she has 
you know, any issues if she develops fever because she did not have a fever, so they didn't think it was an infection. And he said, like, keep us updated. I want a little bit more depth, so I think I'm going to go in with a touch of mink here. So anyway, we just continued to treat with Motrin. We would give her Motrin in the morning when she woke up, and that was the only time she needed it, was right in the morning when she woke up. She wouldn't walk at first for like two or three days when she woke up. We'd give her the Motrin, and a little while later she would start walking and with a limp. So that happened Easter, Sunday, and Monday. Tuesday was the worst day. She was with my mom. My mom watches her while we're at work. And my mom said she wouldn't walk for like three hours. My mom was freaking out. She had Motrin. Brielle took a warm bath. She still wouldn't walk. My mom's like, I feel like I need to take her somewhere. Well, she started walking a little while later. Of course, I was, you know, calling the doctor. They said nothing to panic about. She ended up walking a little while later. By Thursday that week, she was totally back to normal. Oh, something in my eye. I'm going to go in with that original stripped shade. She was totally back to normal. Her, her temp ran around 99-ish. It got up to like 100, but less than 100.4, which is fever for her. Her pediatrician knew. I told him about it. He wasn't concerned. And by the weekend, she was completely back to herself, running, jumping, no signs of injury, just completely back to her normal self. So I had never heard of that transient synovitis, and nobody that I know has ever heard of it. So I felt like that was something I wanted to share with y'all. If you have a young child and randomly one day they don't want to walk and they didn't have an injury, contact your doctor and ask them about transient synovitis. It was the weirdest thing, the scariest thing, let me tell you, the scariest thing that could have ever happened is just you wake up and your kid just doesn't want to walk like that's so weird but thankfully by the grace of God she is healed it was not an injury I mean like I said there was no signs of redness she didn't fall she didn't trip she was totally normal the night before we were like what in the world just a fluke thing and apparently according to our pediatrician not that uncommon okay so I know I've started doing my eye look, but now that I have that story out of the way, the other popular item that y'all told me you wanted to see me use was the Supreme Nudes by Artist Couture. I'm pretty sure this eyeshadow palette came out in 2020. It is a neutral eyeshadow palette. I have heard tons of people, especially my friend Britt Clark, raving about this eyeshadow palette for so long. It's $40. I picked mine up during the Sephora VIB sale, and I've been using it all week. So, I do want to go in with I'm trying to use all of these shades, and I think after today's look, I will have. I want to go in with this green shade in Supreme, and I'm going to take this Royal and Lang Nickel Medium Eye Shader. Now, I always use setting spray for my shimmers. I just feel like it helps them pop. So I'm going to go into Supreme, tap it off a bit. Where'd my Fix Plus go? Spritz it with Fix Plus. And apply that onto my eye using this nice mirror now if you caught my haul my Sephora VIB sale haul I said that this eyeshadow palette gives me like master palette by Mario vibes and I actually have that eyeshadow palette I'll grab it for you in a minute to show you the two together but if you want to see if if they're dupes for each other if you want me to like do a dedicated look where I try to match the looks on each eye let me know down below and I'll do that for you so the thing that I've noticed about this palette is that the mattes blend nicely the shimmers are very pigmented they go on nicely and by spritzing them with fix plus I don't have any fallout, which I hate fallout. These eyeshadow shades appear to have like specks of glitter in them. But like I said, if I don't get any fallout on my eye, I'm fine with it. And I don't really notice glitter. Like I don't think it's actual glitter. I think it just looks like there are little specks when you're looking at the shimmer shades. So application is so easy. 
so blendable, super creamy, and I found that the longevity is there with these eyeshadows. Like I wear them all day and they're not like falling <laughs> falling off my eyelid by the end of the night. Now this is my first time to use Supreme and I don't want a harsh line between my crease and shimmer shade, but I am finding it's not blending as nicely as some of my others do. It's taking a little bit of extra work. I'm just gonna go in with Stripped and try and get everything to blend. I'm a blender. I like things to blend. One thing about this palette as well is that I love that there are shades for you to set your eyeshadow. No matter your skin tone, I think there are shades that would work for you to set just because, you know, like I use, I use this lightest shade, but if you are a little bit deeper or tan, you have these shades, you have some, some deeper shades. So I feel like it's good, I feel like I need to go in with that crease shade again. It's good in the sense, let me go into to Silhouette. It's good in the sense that you have a matte if you're someone who likes to set your eyeshadow primer like myself, but you don't have um, a light shimmer. So I love going in with an inner corner highlight and I don't have that with this palette. So I've actually been using the Ofra Highlighter Dream Chaser, the collab with Samantha March. I've been using that shade as my inner corner highlighter just because I've been using the face shades and Ofra said that those shades are safe for the eye as well. Now I do think that this is a, a great neutral palette. You have great colors for every day. If you're a color lover, I'm, this palette's not gonna be for you. Great eyeshadow shades, great pigmentation, blendability, very smooth. I had a little bit of a tougher time blending out Supreme, but I didn't notice that with Lavish, Bronzania. I haven't used Opulence, but I didn't notice it with, with these two shimmers. The two shades that I have not used are these two right here. But overall, I think the quality is great, and it's $40. However, however, don't come for me. I think this is a great palette, but I feel like it got so hyped up, almost to the point where I don't know what I was expecting, but because I kept hearing people hype it up, I thought that it was just gonna blow me away. It was gonna blow me out of the water, knock my socks off, it was going to transform my life, and I, I don't, I don't feel that way. I think it's great. I think it's a great eyeshadow palette. I'm happy that it's in my collection. I'm enjoying it, but I don't think that it's like this amazing knock your socks off eyeshadow palette. Like if you already have these colors in your collection, I don't think you necessarily need to get this one, but it's not a bad palette and I don't regret it. I do like it. I'll get a ton of use out of it. You get a huge mirror, a gorgeous mirror. The packaging is sleek. I do enjoy the shades. I just feel like that's the problem with YouTube sometimes. I am gonna go in with this, trend. well, that might not go with the look. I was going to say I'm going to go in with Transcend because I haven't used it, but I think I'm going to go in with Silhouette because that's what I put in my crease. I feel like sometimes the problem with YouTube is that products can get so hyped up. Good products. I think this is a good product and for $40, it's great. And I mean, Definitely, if you if you didn't get your hands on the Master Palette by Mario, I do think this one is similar. But I just, I don't know. I just don't feel like, I don't feel like if you have these shades 20 times over in your collection that you necessarily need this palette. It's a great basic eyeshadow palette. I do enjoy it. I will use it. I just feel like it's just like every other neutral eyeshadow palette that I have in my collection. I mean, how do you guys feel? Do you have this palette? I think it's good. I don't want you guys to get me wrong. I think it's a good palette. I just feel like it's, it's just, it's good, you know? It's good. 
it's good. Okay, so I put some mascara on. I took the highlighter from Ofra Samantha March, put it on my inner corner, and then I went and grabbed my Master Palette by Mario to show y'all. And again, if you want a comparison video using the two and seeing if I really can dupe it and create the same look, let me know. So here we have the two. They definitely give me similar vibes, like the, the Bronx shade and Supreme, the, the greens, those give me similar vibes. And then like Muse and NYC give me Bronzania vibes. You have a gold in Fifth Avenue and a gold in Lavish, and then just those matte shades. I just, I get, I get very similar vibes out of the two. So if you want a comparison, I can definitely do that. Let me know down below. But I just did want to show you, if you didn't get your hands on this, then I do think that you may enjoy this palette. Now, I did kind of gloss over this Vive Eye Wand. These were the newest release from Vive. I'm stacking up my collection, have a couple blushes, have the eye wand, I have a lipstick. Once I get my hands on the eyeshadow palette, I'll do a dedicated review to Vive. But I got the shade Vanilla, and I got this to use as an eyeshadow primer because I do struggle with eczema on my eyelids. I have very dry eyelids and even underneath my eyes. And I thought that this might be nice and creamy. And it's not as creamy as I expected. It does go onto my eyelids fine and I haven't had any issues with my eczema in applying this, but it's just like it's not as creamy as the MAC Paint Pots. MAC Paint Pots, I feel like, do the same kind of thing as this wand. You just apply it with your finger. And this, I feel like I am tugging a little bit, trying to blend it in. Overall, I think that it helps my eyeshadows stick onto my lid. But I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think that you need this, okay? That's just my honest opinion. Now let's go into a lipstick. I think today may be the day that we use Velvet Muse by Lisa Eldridge. I have not been wanting to swatch this, but I didn't buy it just to look at it. Are y'all ready for this? You're going to catch the first swatch on camera. Ooh, that's a very pretty shade. A very deep nude shade and matte a nude matte let's go ahead and apply it that lipstick shade definitely feels very comfortable on the lips it went on nicely it applied beautifully and while it does appear to be a matte it doesn't feel drying. It's not a dry matte. There have definitely been matte lipsticks in a bullet lipstick formula where when they are applied, they feel very drying and I don't think that this lipstick feels very drying at all. This is my first time wearing it so I can't necessarily tell you about longevity. It is a bullet lipstick so it will transfer if you're eating or drinking, but the shade Velvet Muse is beautiful. Not to mention you get this magnetic packaging and there's something very satisfying about that. I did go ahead and zoom back out just to give you final wrap up thoughts. Really enjoying the Life's a Draft eyeshadow palette or face palette. I think it's amazing. I really like the highlighter, the bronzer, the blush, very versatile. I have a whole review on that. If you want to hear more in-depth thoughts, this is my first time trying the Lisa Aldridge lipstick formula at all and Velvet Muse. I really enjoy this color. It's a great Kelly color. Feels very comfortable on the lips. It's not on my teeth. That's amazing. Beautiful shade. First impression, very happy with that one. I do like that you have the matte look without the dryness to it. I am very excited about my Becca Cosmetics blush. I think the shade Flower Child is a beautiful shade. It just is unlike anything that I have in my collection. I don't typically go for pinks, and this is pink with a subtle, a subtle with a subtle hint is what I was trying to say. A subtle hint of like 
an orange peach glow. It gives you a nice sheen on the skin. So if you're not into a sheen, if you like more of a matte blush, this may not be the one for you, but if you do want to try out a Becca blush, I think that it is very beautiful and you need to jump on it before Becca is gone. The Vive Eye Wand. I'm going to use it because I have it. I will not be repurchasing others. And unless you're like super into eye wands, I would tell you just to kind of pass on it as well. But the two products that y'all really wanted to hear most, the Good Apple Foundation by KBD and Supreme Nudes. Overall, I like them both. I think they're good. Is the foundation going to be an absolute favorite go-to that I go to all of the time? No, but it works for my dry skin. It's long lasting. It's a very nice color match and I think that it looks good. So I will reach for it. It's one where if I used it up, I don't necessarily know that I would purchase another, but I do enjoy it. And I kind of feel the same about the Supreme Nudes. I think the eyeshadow shades in here are beautiful. I love the packaging. I like that you get a nice large mirror, but it's just, it's just a good palette. It's a good everyday nude shade. But if you don't have either of these, I don't think you need to necessarily like try to run out and get them. I think they're good, but I just feel like if you have tons of these shades, you don't necessarily need this one. Unless you did not get your hands on the Master Palette by Mario and you really wanted that one, then this would be a great alternative. But that is going to do it for this video. Thank you for getting ready with me. If you like this look, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe, stay a while, be part of the K-Bella fam. Let me know if there are any other videos that you wanna see in the comments down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you next time. Bye.